Check out them little beauties right there. Isn't that a pretty dinkle? You start getting mid-January when ducks are really paired up bad, I'll set my decoys different. Instead of setting out in big groups, I'll set them out in pairs or, or groups of pairs. Um, I'll make sure we got them paired up pretty good. I have some lone drakes off to the side, but I try to make it look like the time of year. Once you get on up in January and ducks are paired tight, if you see a flock of six ducks, that's not six ducks, that's three pairs. And they're gonna act different and they'll call different. We'll get into that in another subject. But with your decoys, once you get late, change them up, match the time of year, and match the physiology of the ducks. Starting to look like it's supposed to now a little bit. Also too, it never hurts, it never hurts to uh, make almost a little spot look like three or four are just lit. I don't know if it helps, but it makes makes me think of where I want ducks to be, thinking about distance. Uh, hunting in the field, a lot of times I, I don't judge distance as well as I do being in the woods because you got trees to go by and heights and width. Out in the field, a big old green top, 60 yards away, looks like he's plenty close, but really it's too far. Um, you got to get your eyes acclimated to the area you hunt. So if you're placing decoys like at 40 or 30 or and even out to 50, you'll kind of know where you're at. Also, too, when you think about what you're doing, go back and double check your Onyx map. Think about where ducks may be holding, think where ducks may be feeding. This is a feeding area. We're hoping ducks are coming back here to feed in this cornfield this evening. It could be if you're hunting a resting spot, find out that line. Go back to your Onyx, look for major refuge areas, state WMAs, federal rest areas, whatever it may be. Find out where your ducks are at and get underneath. I'm a big believer in a jerk cord, but I like a jerk cord in the woods because you're standing up, it's easy to run. Sometimes the jerk cord is really hard to run out of a pit. I keep one handy in case we need it, but it's also a good place nowadays with everybody building motion decoys. The, anything that agitates the water, keeping that water moving is good. If you got wind and you got natural ripples on the water, put your decoys to where that water is rippling. Make it look more natural. You, go get your other stuff. you notice the pit there behind me looks flat. It looks organic. It looks like a part of this field. This morning we had some flaps up in front of us which hit us very well from the front, but it didn't cover us from the side or the back. So ducks circling around, they'd see that big, great, big black hole something non-organic, a straight line that's dark that doesn't match the environment. So we had the guy, the crew come down here and changed everything up with corn stalks, fixed it up where we could get rid of the black holes. You can look over here, you can see where they've got those corn stalks piled up. And look between those stalks, you see those black holes. I call that the great black hole of abyss. On a cloudy day, that's what they see. That's what scares them. So we're going to eliminate that when we get set up and set down in there. We're going to make sure those black holes ain't showing.